Hey, Mistral Spirit. If you're like me, you've got dozens of empty notebooks lying around. Whether they were gifts, because everyone knows you love stationery, or impulse buys, there's a lot of them. So today I've put together 16 creative and productivity boosting ways to store a teensy bit of yourself into an empty notebook. Keep in mind, if you're big on technology, you can totally use these ideas too. Just open up a document and get writing. First of all, if you're not already using a bullet journal, I highly recommend one. They help you get your life together by acting as a place to store all of your tasks, lists, sticky notes, plans, and goals. Plus, they can double up as a journal and a sketchbook and a doodle notebook if you so please. Check out my post on setting up your very first bullet journal in the description box below. All you need is any kind of notebook and a pen. And then you might want a cover page for 2018 with your goals and your accomplishments to fill in throughout the year. Next, you might want to set up some monthly spreads that work for you. I use a monthly planner, a memories spread, and a meal tracker. And in fact, if you want to grab a free printable of my style of monthly spreads, you can find that on my blog too, and I'll have a link in the description below. And finally, you can go ahead and jot down your to-do lists each day in what we professional bullet journalers call your dailies. And that's it. Number two, a bullet journal collections book. Although the initial design for a bullet journal suggests that you should keep all your lists in it, and that's what I did for my first four bullet journals, I got tired of rewriting my long collections each time I finished a bullet journal notebook. So I keep a separate notebook now for all of my collections. This includes lists like my Seize the Day Apocalypse or Bucket List, my Lifestyle Habit Tracker, my favorite recipes, healthy living motivation, ways to set the mood, fun stuff to do, activities for groups, movie, TV show, podcast, book, walls of fame, and more. I'm still working on it, but you'll be able to get a closer look at my collections notebook once I finish it up. Number three, an ideas notebook. Instead of storing all of your sudden bursts of genius on your phone, emailing them to yourself, or keeping them on sticky notes, try keeping them together in a small notebook. That way you can track ideas for future projects, things you want to learn, art projects, or even short story ideas. Number four, a journal. There are so many variations on this one and it makes for a really great start to the morning. Personally, I love to jot down some morning intentions as soon as I wake up to get me inspired and awake. You can keep a gratitude journal where you write down things that you're grateful for in your life, a diary for longer entries about particular days that you want to remember, or you can keep a lessons I've learned journal for occasional entries whenever you feel like you've reached a breakthrough on life, the universe, and everything. Number five, Q and A a day. I saw this in my local chapter's bookstore for sale for about $30, and I loved the idea, but I decided to save some money and make my own instead. And I came up with 52 questions whose answers would be very interesting to watch as they change over the course of five years. Then I sat down with some nice music and I lay out my very own Q and A a day book. I write in it every week with a short blurb answering whatever question that week asks me. And once I hit the year mark, it'll be super cool to read my old answers to the questions and see how they've changed. Number six, a questions notebook. Nope, it's not the same thing as number five. This one is an idea I saw in a children's book a while ago. The main character had a notebook in which he wrote one question he had about the world before going to sleep. And it was things like, why do we hiccup and why do seasons exist? Of course, you'll have your own questions that relate to your life and what you're going through. Then, in the morning, you can research those questions or continue to ponder them throughout the next day. Number seven, a quotes journal. Now, I find so many quotes that I love and motivational phrases or sayings, so for me, compiling them all into one notebook would be a very, very difficult task. But for those more selective of you, a quotes journal is a super cool way to keep all of your favorite sayings in one place. And if you ever need some inspiration, motivation, or a quote for your grad yearbook, you'll have some ready. Number eight is a running list of your favorite things. It's always great to keep a list like this handy. You can write down your favorite movies, books, music, TV shows, podcasts, courses, clothing styles, pens, brands, and so on. Number nine, letters to my future or past self. If you keep a journal, this isn't that much different. But if you don't think you'd be able to journal regularly, which I'm sure a lot of you might, you can think about it as a writing an occasional letter to your future or past self sort of thing. I like future because my, I mean, my past self won't ever be able to read what I wrote, 
Um, but in any case, these are always fun to look back at and cringe about. Number 10, a writer's notebook. There's a reason why they say to be a writer, you must write. And with all these notebook suggestions, but especially this one, it's so important to ditch formats and layouts and focus on just getting the most out of the notebook. Now, a writer's notebook can be a collection of poetry, short stories, random descriptions, and character sketches, but it definitely doesn't need to be pretty. When I kept a writer's notebook back when I did NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, it was very simply a mess of scribbles and words, and that's totally awesome. Number 11 is an apocalyst. And you can also call this a bucket list, my list, or a book of possibilities. It's basically a list of things that you want to do someday, ideally while you're alive, hence the first two names. And you can keep this in a separate small notebook or like I do in your bullet journal or collections journal. Some of the things on my apocalypse are act in a play, do a 5K, a 10K, learn to do the splits, visit the UK, study abroad, learn to curl, ride a Segway, go on a hike up a mountain, and so on and so forth. Number 12, a travel notebook or a places to visit notebook. If you're the type who travels a lot, you can keep a variation of an apocalypse in the form of a travel notebook. The front section of the notebook could be for an ongoing list of countries or cities, and then you could use each spread afterwards as a sort of passport page where you doodle, journal about, or review the places that you went to. Number 13 is a sketching notebook, or better known as a sketchbook. Every artist should have one on hand, and you'll probably want to figure out a style of sketchbooking as well. For me, I like to either draw larger pieces in my sketchbook pages, or smaller sketchbook with occasional messy cursive writing that details where or when I drew those pictures. You can also keep different notebooks for different types of sketches, one for traveling and carrying with you everywhere, one for lettering quotes, or a project-specific one, for example if you're studying watercolor or learning how to draw people. Number 14 is a scrapbook. I was never big on scrapbooks, but if you like preserving keepsakes in a nice little memorable notebook, go for it. I'd pick something that was cheaper and with thinner paper because it's gonna get very full and thick with taped memorabilia. Number 15, a health tracker. My monthly memories and meal tracking spreads in my bullet journal, which you can also print for yourself, are where I keep track of my health. However, if you don't want to keep a full-on bullet journal, you can just keep a notebook to track your activity each day and your food intake. For food, I tried two ways in the past, and they both have different uh, benefits. One way is by simply putting a check mark when you consume a serving of each type of food category. And this helped me a lot when I was just starting my food journey, and also when I was trying to lower my cholesterol, because it showed me what food groups I was overeating and which ones I needed to eat more of. Another way of tracking food is by simply writing down what you eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. And then I also keep track of the size of the meal, so small, medium, or large, and how I felt afterwards. Was I hungry, satisfied, very full, or bloated? This method helps me track different types of food and how I react to them, which is really helpful in determining what kind of a diet works best for me. And by diet, I mean things like plant-based, uh, vegetarian, raw, lots of fish, low carb, and so on. Um, I'll talk more on this later if you're interested, but I also don't believe in fully restricting myself to one diet. However, I do primarily eat plant-based and avoid processed foods. Number 16 is the last one, um, and that's an editorial calendar if you're a blogger or a YouTuber. To see exactly how I used my notebook for blogging, you can check out my bullet journaling for bloggers video. Now, I was lucky enough to receive this gorgeous notebook from Mint Princess, and I've been absolutely loving it. Last month, Tosin from Mint Princess and I hosted a giveaway for a customized notebook, just like this. And though I've never officially announced it, I would like to take this time to congratulate Christina M for winning the giveaway. I'm sure you'll love it just as much as I did. And that's a wrap on 16 super cool, super creative, and super practical ways to use your empty notebooks. I hope you guys got some ideas, and if you like this video, please do give it a like and click the subscribe button since it really helps me out. And I would love to hear from you which of these ideas you like the best. I mean, maybe there's some that you're already doing or variations on the ones that I suggested. Um, but if you have new ideas that I didn't even mention, I would love to hear those too. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.